As you may know, the iPod Touch 4 never officially ran iOS 7, and many people found that surprising considering the iPhone 4 ran iOS 7 and its hardware was almost identical to the iPod Touch 4. So me and a team of other people came together to make the iPod Touch 4 run iOS 7.1.2, the latest version of iOS 7. Now this video may be a little longer than my normal videos because this is an advanced tutorial. I would recommend backing up your iPod Touch before doing this. Hey guys, this is Tech It Out, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install and run iOS 7.1.2 on the iPod Touch 4th generation. So starting off, go ahead and go to your Mac and go to the first link in the description. You will need to know what year model your iPod Touch is, and you can do so by following this step. Unless it is a 16GB, then the year model does not matter. So once you know the year model, or if yours is a 16GB, go ahead and go down here to Downloads. So you are going to know, download one of these folders. So if yours is a 2012 or newer, or is a 16 gigabyte, download this folder. If yours is older than 2012, so a 2011 or 2010, and not a 16 gigabyte, click here. So mine is a 2012 32 gigabyte model. So I'm going to download this folder here. So for you, it's going to click down. It's going to say download, but I've already downloaded it. So now. What I can do is go ahead and go to my desktop where I extracted it from my downloads folder over here. So go ahead and right click on it, click open with, and click archive utility. And it will start extracting it, but I've already extracted it so I don't need to do that again. And here's the folder right here. Once you get the folder, it should look exactly like this. So now here, we need to go ahead and plug your iPod touch in and put it into DFU mode if you have not already done so. So go ahead and plug it in just like this. And to put it into DFU mode, you need to hold the home and power button for 10 seconds and continue holding just the home button until it connects to your computer. So go ahead and close out iTunes if it is trying to sync. So here we go, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and keep holding just the home button until you hear it or see it connect to your computer. It should say it has found an iPod in recovery mode or iTunes should start bouncing like it is on my computer right now. So now mm. iTunes has opened up as you can see. So your iPod should be at a black screen just like this. Should be doing absolutely nothing. So now go ahead and click OK. Now we need to put our device into Pwn DFU. So go ahead and click iTunes. So now we need to go ahead and open up a terminal window and drag this iPhone DFU folder into the terminal. So type CD space and then drag the folder and click enter. Now since our device is already in Pwn DFU or already in DFU mode, now we need to type dot slash iPhone DFU dash p just like that and click enter it may take a few tries before it actually works and doesn't fail sometimes itunes will pop up like that just ignore it so mine worked the first time for once this hardly ever happens so device is now in pwn dfu so now you will need itunes so you're going to option click restore here you click option on the keyboard and click restore so now find that folder that you downloaded and select this IPSW here, the 7.1.2. That's the key numbers you need to look for. Your IPSW will be different based on if yours is the 16 gigabyte one or not. So go ahead and click open. And it's going to start extracting and restoring the software. I'm going to put this in time lapse and I'll be back to you as soon as it is done. Okay, so by now you should see a stuck in recovery mode symbol on your iPod. Now at this point, you're not going to need iTunes anymore, but you will need iPhone DFU again. So leave that terminal window open. Now you're going to need to open another terminal window. So click, right click and click new window. Type CD space key server. Here is where it is critical that you have administrative access right here. So now you have to type sudo Python dash M simple with a capital S 
HTTP server, exactly how I typed it, 80, semicolon. Now click enter. Then you need to type in your administrative access. So now it should say serving HTTP on 0.0.0.0 port 80. So now we need to open another terminal window for future restore. So now we're going to type cd space, drag future restore, click enter. Now we type dot slash f tab m tab. And then we type dash dash just dash boot equals in quotations dash v and use and then type dash dash use dash tone dfu and then click space and then you need to drag this boot ipsw here so that is the command now we need to put our device into dfu mode again so if you're here on the itunes logo just go ahead and hold your home and power button for 10 seconds so 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 now keep holding your home button and you can go ahead and get your iPhone DFU terminal window ready so you can type iPhone dash iPhone D and click tab and it will finish it then dash P so when this connects to your computer it should be any second now if it hasn't already connected I'm not sure you can always check by clicking iTunes so yep here we go so just click OK now click enter on that iPhone DFU dash master and it failed so if it does fail you can try again you can try again a few more times and then if it does not work then you can take your device out of DFU mode and try it again so it worked the second time as you can see here so now I always like to keep my key server open just to monitor what's going on so now on the feature restore go ahead and click enter so now it is going to start to boot your iPod touch into iOS 7.1.2 so it should do all this you should get the detected in recovery mode error and then you should get the iOS 7 Apple logo along with a bunch of verbose text here as you can see it is booting up here the first boot is always the longest boot so keep that in mind because we have this here so that's going to take a few minutes and I'll be back to you as soon as it is done So congratulations, you are now running iOS 7.1.2, the latest version of iOS 7 on your iPod Touch 4, which does not officially support it. Now there are a few downsides to this. One reason is that every time you turn your iPod Touch off, you have to reboot it following the steps in the video starting with the time shown on your screen. It is also quite complicated to get app support, but it should come eventually, as well as some drivers are not working. So huge thanks to at Ralph0045, at Albivar, at the iDevice Archive, at Nalutech, and at Tech It Out 4, which is my account on Twitter for contributing to this project. I really couldn't have done it without these guys. More information about how they contributed on my website. So thank you so much for watching this. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and drop a like. And if you want to see more videos like these, hit that subscribe button. As usual, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comments below. And I will try to get them as soon as I can. I'll catch you in the next video.